Under is a dynamic data narrative interface that allows its users to explore and compare information on the landscape changing, population distribution, and housing price in Boston through the time scale of past, present, and future. Let's dive into the past first. When the Puritans arrived in 1630, much of the land that underlies some of the oldest parts of Boston didn't exist. This photo gallery feature shows a series of photos and illustrations of the Boston landscape when Bostonians first began to make their peninsula bigger. You also have the option to view more information by tapping on the photos you are interested in. Let's explore more in the past. The old map collector is a dynamic map viewing feature that allows its user to explore and layer maps on top of each other. For example, let's go to 1835. First, you have the option to view more information about the year by tapping on the control block with the year on. The details feature shows you even more information about the topic you are interested in. Now let's play with the map. The outline button helps you view the edges more clearly with colored outlines. The shade button colors the area you are viewing. This color is too dark. But you can adjust the transparency of the colored area by sliding the fade button left to right. And the compare button keeps the colored or the outlined area on top of other maps so that you have a better idea of how much land Boston gained over the last 200 years. You can see in 1857, we started to gain some lands around the outer edges. We can always adjust the transparency of the shaded area by using the fade feature. Can you imagine, at that time, the back bay area was filled with trash and other debris, as fill material was less available. Today, the major land making projects are over. But I'm curious how much land Bostonians have gained over the 200 years. By comparing the map of today with the map of 1835, I realized that the Seaport District, Back Bay and Partial of South End were all under the water 200 years ago. The apartment I'm living in right now didn't even exist in 1835. After reading the history of Boston, let's explore what's happening in Boston today. Today, Boston is a world leader in higher education, including law, medicine, engineering, and business. As one of the top 25 cities in the United States for the settlement of foreign-born individuals, Boston's immigrant population has been rapidly growing since 1870. As you can see, by 2000, the Asian population in Boston increased by 67.5%. Chinatown is one of the most densely populated residential areas in Boston and serves as the largest center of its East Asian and Southeast Asian cultural life. The present map explorer gives you the option to learn more about the foreign-born immigrant population distribution in Boston, as well as how much money Bostonians are paying for their apartments monthly. You can see in the immigrant population percentage map, Boston's largest immigrant communities live in East Boston and Chinatown. I'm curious where each demographic group lives. Asian people live mostly in downtown area and seaport district. What about the Hispanic group? We can see they mainly live in East Boston as well as the seaport district. You also have the option to check out more information about a specific demographic. Let's move on to the monthly renting price in Boston. Ranking just after San Francisco and New York City, Boston is the third most expensive rental market in the nation, with a medium one-bedroom rent ranging from $2,000 to $3,000 a month. Now, let's predict the future. Since 1991, Boston has experienced 21 events that triggered federal or state disaster declarations. The pace of relative sea level rise is accelerating because of the global climate change. The challenges from climate change are substantial and complex, but can be addressed through bold and creative actions that support the city's vitality and livability. The future map predictor gives its users a better idea of how much land Boston will lose in the near future. Let's outline the map for a better clarity. Compared to the coastlines nowadays, in 2030, coastlines in Boston start to move inwards. The pace of relative sea level rise is still accelerating. Another 8 inches of relative sea level rise may happen, almost three times faster than the current rate. Most of the seaport district will be flooded by 2030, which is in 10 years. How about in 50 years? In 2070, the sea level rise may be as much as 3 feet higher than today. Let's shade the coastline for a better view. The whole seaport district, south end and partial of Back Bay, could be gone by 2070. As you can see in the extra information, in the late century, a significant portion of Boston's current land may be inundated every month. Now I'm curious how much land we've made will be taken away if we don't take actions to slow down the climate change. By comparing the map of 2070 with the map of 1835, we can see that not only the land we gained through landfill projects will be taken away, but also the land we used to have will be under the water. Asians are one of the most vulnerable demographics in the crisis of sea level rise, as we will lose most of the Chinatown and Seaport District in 2070. Not to mention, most of the highest priced apartments in Boston nowadays could be under the water in the near future. Bostonians must first understand the likely impacts of climate change in order to plan for a strong, resilient future. 
It's time to act now.